Welcome to my channel and to Sewing Made Easy. Maybe you've seen that I've started a while ago to make a jeans shirt. As I got this video for you in YouTube, how I've done this very special pocket on it. And today it should be just a little continuation of how I will do this shirt. So I will show you exactly how you can make a vent in a sleeve. And as well, I show you how you have to, or how you should, add the cuff onto the sleeve as well. Because I know for many of you, this is not so easy. But as I'm showing it to you, step by step, you will find out that it's really not so difficult if you just follow all my steps. So if you're interested, then you should stay tuned right now because I will show it to you right now. Here we go. So let me start by telling you which preparation you should do before the actual sewing will take place. Of course, you do have a pair of sleeves which you cut already. And now it's up to you if you first of all only will make a mark here where your vent will go. Or you do as I did, I cut it in right away. Not the full length, but so I have a guide where to put my other pieces on and it makes it easy for me to stitch. Now I prepare my cuff. A typical width of a cuff is six centimeter when it's finished stitch. That means my cutting, it's got to be 14 centimeters wide. The length depends on your sleeve and of course the size you're doing. So I'm not gonna mention that to you. So what you do with this now? Depending on the material, you either add completely onto the part an interfacing which you will iron on. If it's a very hard material, then it might be enough if you just iron one on on half of the cuff. When you've done that, you can, as you can see what I've done, put some extra stitching in. After I've done that, you got to iron your cuff exactly in half. And after you ironed it in half, the side that will be the outside of your cuff, you iron one centimeter over. You do that to both of your cuffs, of course. Then we prepare the little parts that we need for our vent. The normal width is if you cut it seven centimeters wide. The height, depending on how far you want your vent to go up, because you can have either a short one, like I got here, or you can make it much longer, but then you have to add an extra button in the middle to hold this. You've probably seen this on some shirts already. So, as I mentioned, seven centimeters wide. This underneath one, I cut about 13 centimeters, and you can see this one is up to that corner, about one and a half centimeters shorter, because it's got to be to longer, this one, because this one has to fit underneath and shouldn't show out up here. So with this one, I do practically the same what I've done with the cuff. I put an interfacing on, I iron it in half, and I iron one edge over. Do this again to both parts for the two sleeves that you got. On this one, very similar as well. Again, you add your interfacing. I've left these corners out because when I do my stitching here, there's so much material inside here that it doesn't need no extra interfacing inside. That's why I left the corners off. Now, again, you iron this exactly in half and then iron one edge over. But now it's important, you got to make a pair out of this. On this it doesn't matter, as you know. But here, you definitely need a pair. If you have two the same, you will have a problem later on. As soon as you've prepared everything like that, you go on your sewing machine Take your cuff and exactly in your middle edge that you ironed, you fold it over, you leave that ironed over centimeter lying like that and you stitch along your one centimeter seam, which is the normal you would have in the cuff here. You do exactly the same to the other side and to the other cuff. On these two parts, we don't need to do any preparation and how we continue with this job, I show to you exactly on the sewing machine. And now we got to prepare those two little parts for our vent. For doing that, we don't only stitch the actual top that we got there, 
which doesn't have to be in a triangle like that. You can also make a flat one, but this always looks a little bit nicer, I think. So do that whatever top you want there and then stitch down here another two and a half centimeters approximately. Why this is the case, take your underneath part from your vent and have a look how long this part is. And your stitching down here has got to go approximately a centimeter lower than when you had them lying down here even with each other. This one's got to be sticking over practically over the seam that you got there. So this has got to be stitched down long enough later on to cover this particular part. And also when you look, you can see that my ironing fold was a little bit here to the left. Why I didn't stitch directly in the fold, why I stitched a little bit on the side, is because the material needs to roll around the seam. Because on this side I don't have a seam. So it needs a bit more there and that gives me the security that my two sides here of my triangle stitching will be looking even. If I would have gone right away in that groove, this side would look short. So that's your preparation you've got to do. And as that side, not the folded over side, the still lying flat material, will be the one we're stitching on first, we have to exactly where our last stitch is, just take the scissors and cut onto that last, last stitch so we will be able to open up that seam because you can see when I turn it inside out now, see, I cut this in here and therefore I can stitch the seam on which I wouldn't be able to do if I hadn't have done that. So let's start the sewing job then. Now I do have my left side of the material facing me. This is my front and this is the back side of my sleeve and I start stitching on the bottom. That means on my front I must have this part on. I'm putting everything exactly edge on edge and I'll stitch this exactly into this little corner where I just did the cut. All the way up there I'll stitch this now. One centimeter into this corner. Now we turn this part over. Take our opposite part and we put it all even on the edge, on the cutting edge together. And now we start exactly opposite of our last stitch here. We start stitching here. Now we turn this toward the right side facing us. I will put here two little points for the last stitch. Now I take my scissors. Underneath I put all my seams away. I only want to have my sleeve that I cut now. And exactly as if I'm doing a pocket in a triangle, I'm cutting this opening now. Now I first pull my underneath part towards the right side. I start on the top here where my last stitching from early on was. Stitch down that edge once so it's held here already. Go along there and just stitch along that edge as well. So that's my underneath, it's finished. Now we take the other part, pull it towards us, and you can see we have this little triangle here. And if we only just lie it on top of each other once, now have a look, that's what it looks like from the left side. So let's just fasten that little triangle so it's not gonna slip out afterwards. We just put the top one aside and take our triangle and we stitch exactly from corner to corner that little triangle down. And you can see then it's held here from the left side already. So let's have a look again at our proper side. As you can see it's almost done. Now we're having a look at our ironed edge that we got here and we just from the top down without stitching back and forth and you just stitch along that edge a millimeter away from the edge. Now you can go over here right away. And now we're pushing our seam nicely into that part and keep the underneath away. So you're not stitching over that at the moment. And we're stitching along here now. 
So we're only stitching now into that corner that is earlier on where we were stitching to. And when we reach that point, we push our underneath under there. We're looking at the end down here to make sure it's lying evenly on the bottom. Now put your part nice and flat or put in double needles in if you wish. And we're going along that whole part. We already stitched there a little bit. So we're going over the same seam again. And when we reach that point where we cut in early on, that's where we got to turn. And exactly there is where we're turning. And to make sure you do this in a right angle, you can put yourself some marks there. Or take a pattern which you might have lying on your sewing machine which has a right angle so you can position it somewhere on the sides of your went parts, then stitch across to the end of that line there and stitch a couple of more stitches upwards towards your little triangle and you will see now your vent is actually totally finished. So let's have a look at it. And when you've finished your vent totally, stitch the sleeves into the armhole, close the sides of the shirt, then you pull your sleeve to the right side and fasten all the little pleats you might have. Now you take your prepared cuff, open the sleeve so you're looking in the inside of your sleeve and take your turned over, turned around cuff and start at the end where your vent is and on the edge of your cuff. And it doesn't matter if it's the left or the right arm, you do exactly the same thing. Because now you're putting exactly those two edges even with each other. And you start sewing exactly where your last stitch from your cuff is, right there. In that corner you start sewing a one centimeter seam. If you have pleats in the um, straighten them out so they're going straight up and not lying sideways. Put edge on edge here on the bottom and sew your centimeter seam. Now before you continue, why don't you take the other side of your vent and of your cuff, hold them together because you know that's where you want to end your seam. Hold it together and just give it a check. It's only a check to see if your width from the cuff is even with your sleeve. And if that is the case, you can let go right there. Look that you got edge on edge line correctly there and continue sewing. And again, you can have a look right away for the end that they fit together these two pieces which you are going to stitch together. So you can see it's now a straight line, but important is that these two edges again are totally lying even with each other. And that's my last stitch here from stitching the cuff. So exactly onto that last stitch I got to sew. And when I just do a brief check now here, I turn this and I have a look. That's how my vent goes into the cuff right there. But now first of all I'll change my thread because I like to have a contrast thread on the top as well and I continue. And as soon as you stitch the cuff onto your sleeve, you should make one more check to be sure that your length of your cuff is even, also the length of your vent is totally even. So just lie it flat on top of each other, and then you have the control. To continue, we're pulling the sleeve on the other side, on the left side facing you now, because that is easier to stitch, although we could also do it the other way around. So go on to this end and put your cuff over the edge of your seam that you've just done. Now make sure that this line is totally even. Don't push the cuff over that way and don't pull the seam over towards the right side because that's the right side we're facing here in the inside. So put it really even as you can see right here, hold it more or less in position. While holding, turn it under the machine and go approximately at the end of the piece from your vent. 
Now make sure everything is really tucked in very well down there and that the cuff's lying flat. And just start stitching without doing a back stitching on the machine. Go down your edge, the corner, turn around and as we ironed this already, this is very easy to just go along the button with a one millimeter stitch as you can see what I'm doing right here. As soon as you get to the other side, leave the needle in the material, do one or two stitches upwards and now first look again to this end. Also this one, tuck it in very well. Make sure you've got one line here. Don't push it over or pull it over too far. And when you know you're exactly in that correct position, very even here, you go up, again turn, and only do about two stitches at the moment, that's all. So it's held in the corner, your seam cannot slip out anymore. Put your cuff flat down and cover just this seam that you've just done slightly over. It should not show out. Do a couple of stitches again and continue here. Now, if you just put a little pull on the bottom seam on and your top part is just loosely lying, that makes it very easy for you not to push the top over too far and you would have some left over here. So just put a certain, a little bit of tension on the bottom, put your cuff on the top and go along the edge. And now you can see already the end. Because we started here, this makes it so easy to now just finish this seam off. And occasionally look underneath to make sure you're not getting any folds into the material there. It should all be lying totally flat for you. So you stitch towards your starting stitches there and don't go back and forth. Just go exactly inside the stitches you got there, about three or four stitches, and finish your seam. And that's what your start or your end looks then. You can see it hardly doesn't show that your start was there. I'll finish off nicely. Now turn your sleeve back towards the proper side. So check again and make sure you're satisfied with the job you've done there. Now you can make the decision, do you want to put a buttonhole into this or do you want to put a press button because that's probably what I'm going to be doing. Well my friends, thank you so much for watching my videos as I've done this pocket for you as well already. It is in YouTube, you can find it there. And today again I would like to say Send me some nice comments from all over the world. I really appreciate that. So I wish you luck. I wish you happiness. I wish you health and peace. Goodbye for now. With many greetings from Germany. I'm Lilo.